Doing data sciences usually means that we load one or a couple of data files and then start manipulating, visualizing, processing these in various ways. Now, in the first step, we need to load some data. Python itself does not have that many own commands or functions. This is why lots of people programmed libraries full of additional commands that can be used, for example, to load and manipulating data. And one very popular library for manipulating data is called Pandas. Um, if you're like me, you wonder why it's called Pandas, like the animal, I have no clue. So let's start by first importing this library. And for this, we use the command import and then write down pandas. Pandas is the name of the package. And then we execute this. You will see nothing happened, but in the background, this entire library has been loaded. Now, before we can use commands from this library, we need a data file. And to access data files from Colab, you can go onto your drive. So on this um, folder icon here on the left, then go to drive. Then on my drive, I won't open it because there are a couple of uh, names. So for personal data protection, I leave this closed. And then within dr my drive, I have an additional folder called data. So you can add folders by right clicking on this um, icon, go on new folder, the new folder will be created, call it, for example, data, and then right click on data, go on upload, and you can upload a couple of files. For example, the data folder, folder my data folder looks like this. So there are currently three files in there. So I have provide these files so you can load exactly the same files in here if you want. And then you start using these pandas command here. So I have a new cell and then what I need to do is write down pandas because this now means so I'm now telling pandas uh, Python to use a command from the pandas package and then I use the dot notation. So and then I'm calling in this case now the read command or method and you want to read an Excel file so it's actually called read Excel because this could also be CSV for CSV files for example and then a normal open round bracket. And in here I write the name, not a command, but the name of the file I want to load. Now, a name is just a string of characters. And a string of characters, such a name is put into quotation marks. You can use single quotation marks, double quotation marks, both work, I prefer single quotation marks. And then the name of the file I want to load is called mineral data.xlsx. Now I can run it. And um, I might have... Oh, sorry. What I need to do here, of course, is it won't work because the mineral data file is located um, in a specific folder and I first need to locate the folders. So I need to provide the entire path. So this Colab file basically is stored in the uppermost, on the uppermost level here in the folder path. So the path is drive. So I need to put in drive, then my drive, my drive, and then data, and then mineral data, and then it should load the data file here. So I'll collapse this left sidebar to have a little bit more space. And now this is the data file which is in here and I also have this open and you can see it's exactly the same file. If I go back, you can see this. Now let's have a look at this table here because it looks a little bit different. First of all, there's an additional column here with some numbers and this is called the index. So this is and the index numbers the data sets. And again, it starts with zero. So it's the first data set, the second data set, third data set and so on. And we already learned a little bit here about how a data file should be structured. There should be a header with the category names. So that's the first column category mineral, second oxygen, then a third already there's something unnamed which is a bit unclear. We'll come to this in a second and so on. Um, and this is then and then the next row is one data set. So each data set is within a row, not 
sort of like in a column. And this is something very important to remember already if you work with data sets or you produce a data sets, this should be a general structure. And then you have this additional index that Pandas produces and that can be helpful in the course of manipulating these kind of data. Now, why is there here an unnamed? Let's have a look in here. And what you can see is that in this column, there's no category name. And the data set should always have a category name. So here, for example, this could be sample. So I put in sample here. Also, the first row is not just a first row. It is the row of the category. So if I have here a blank, so I put in a blank row here, and then I am loading this again. I'm reading this again. Um, first of all, you can see here the sample. Of course, um, well, in this case, for Colab, um, Pandas is clever enough to ignore the first row. If you do it in Jupyter Notebooks, you won't get a first row. So there will be just all in um, the first row will be just all unnamed or something. Like so for example, I put in just a one, then it can't be ignored again. And you will see there's, um, did it save it? Yes, there's also a sample. Okay, it seems Colab is a little bit more clever than usually Jupyter Notebooks. If you do it in other Jupyter Notebooks, you very often see that the first row is then full with just unnamed. That's fine. There's some um, cleanup already built in. Okay, very, and now we have this pandas here in front. Um, and it's quite tedious to always write pandas here if I want to use a command from the pandas library. And this is why it's possible to make a short name here. So now we want to import pandas as another name. And here as a shortcut, I write PD. It's already suggested because this is very common that pandas has the name PD. I could, and then down here next line, I don't need to write pandas, but I can just write PD, run it, and this will work again. But I could use any name here. I could also use um, only panda. No one does it. But if I would do it, um, I would need to write panda here as well. Um, then this is also working. Yeah, you can use whatever name you want. But convention is for pandas, use PD. And then it becomes much more, much more shorter here. And pandas, this format here with the index, with the categories, and so on. So this entire pandas table, if you want, is called in pandas a data frame. If you want to know what uh, this entire, well, and because it's, I'll show you in a second, because it's a data frame, very often this data, this the table, if you assign it to a variable, the variable is called df, for, and then df is this entire table. And this entire table is then assigned to this um, variable, which again is very often called df. So you, you can run it, you won't see anything because df is not written here. And if I then write df, you can see the table again. Now, if you want to know what kind of type this variable is, you can use, in fact, the pandas function type, run it, and it says it's a pandas core frame data frame. This is how you can always see what it is. If I would have for type, just to make an example, a number here, then it would say it's an integer. If this would be within um, quotation marks, you would get a string here or a str for string. So you, this is how you can find out types. All right, so now we assigned it to this df variable. And so it's not assigning it each time. When I run this cell, I'm just using a new cell here and put in df. Now, a second thing we are seeing is that there are these dots. And these dots are within, um, okay, now maybe it, now it has this unnamed row. Maybe it took some time to um, be saved and then reloaded. I guess that's what happened. So I was already surprised I didn't do it 
apparently this is the case. So let's cut this, I delete this entire row again. Um, right, it might take again briefly to in the background reload. It doesn't matter for the for the moment. So we have this entire next column here with these dots. And this means th these are done because the entire data frame has um, 28 columns. So it starts again with zero, 28 columns. And um, it could be maybe 200 columns. And then it's difficult to display them or it will take a long time to display them. And this is why this Pandas data frames just um, omits a couple of columns. And the same can be true for rows, should there be a lot of rows. Now we have 26 rows, 28 columns. If it's a very long table, you could also find this out by putting in a df shape, run it, and it tells you about the size of this data frame. Now this can be also quite helpful, this command, because if you want to see all the columns, what you can do is up here set an option for the data frame. And this is done like this. So we have again PD for pandas, then we set an option and the option is called, we need name here, display maximum rows. And then D, and then we say here, for example, 28, because we have a total of, uh, we have 26 rows. So we have a total of 26 rows. Um, actually, all rows are already displayed, so that's columns and we have 28 columns, and then I run that, the option here, and I run the data frame, and now I see all the columns here. And I can do the same for rows, just in case not all rows are displayed. And then I would see all the rows as well. Now, of course, I'm not, I don't know, if I use a number here, I don't know how many columns or rows are within this data table. So it's a little bit um, difficult to put in uh, the, the numbers here. But what I can do is if I use the shape command, then these are the rows, these are the columns. So if you use shape and then extract the first number, so zero, this is the first number of this to get 25. And this is the 25 I have in here for the for the rows here, yeah, because we had 25 rows. So what you can do is you can just put a df shape in here, then there will be 25. And for 28 for the columns, I use the second from, from shape. If I put this here, so this is 25 is the rows. So df shape, the first value will be the rows, the second value will be the columns. And if I then I should run this first, and if I afterwards run this, I see all the columns and all the rows, which is then quite helpful. Now for manipulation, if I want to extract a certain column, for example, I can do this by simply making this, again, square brackets, as I just did with shape, and now I give the name of the column. So for example, MGO. I run it, and I get the MGO column here. I put in um, SIO, SIO2 and I get the SIO2 column. So these are now ways to very quickly access various rows here. And then I can start manipulating these entire um, columns and I start, can then start manipulating these entire columns here, something like this. And then just one additional thing here, for example, SIO2, maybe I only want well, there's some with 0 0.59, 0 0.16, and I think this is doesn't make any sense, or these are not interesting. I just want SI2 larger than 50 or something like this. I can simply write here larger than 50, run it, and the first thing I will get is a table with whether, um, or column, whether the value is above 50 or not. So for this case, this, um, it's, it's wrong, it's, you know, it's false, it's false, and it's true, and so on. And this is something I can use as a filter. I can call filter this Boolean false and true results here. And then put this filter again into the F and then the square brackets. And then 
I will get all the data sets in which SI2 is larger than 50. Or I can use larger than 40. I will get all that are larger than 40. Or what I can also do, just as an outlook, I can combine with an N, so it should be larger than 40 and smaller than 50. And if I have two of these conditions here, I need to put them into round brackets. And both will be used and then I will get SI2 that are larger than 40 and smaller than 50. So these are filters and this is um, Pandas data frames and how these can be used to load and manipulate data.